Pneumatic controllers have three basic mechanisms, just like all self-balancing instruments. These mechanisms are an input, an error detector, and an output balancing mechanism. An input mechanism converts a change in a process variable into a mechanical motion, which is sensed or detected by the error detector. The output from the error detector, called back pressure, is used by the output balancing mechanism to develop the controller's output signal. In this course, we'll identify how these basic mechanisms are utilized so that the controller measures the input signal, compares it to set point, computes the difference, and generates a corrective output signal. Now, in a proportional controller, the basic mechanisms work together to enable the controller to produce an output that is proportional to its input. We'll examine how this controller provides P-only control in a few minutes. Now, first, let's see how the controller's basic mechanisms can be arranged so that it can provide P-only control. In this illustration, the input mechanism is at bellows, which we will refer to as an input bellows. The input signal from a transmitter is applied to this bellows. This is where the controller measures the value of the process variable. We'll use a pressure gauge to indicate the value of the input to the controller. The input bellows exerts a force on one end of the beam. The beam is pivoted at its center. As you remember, the second function of a controller is to compare the measured signal to set point. The set point for this controller is established by the tension of a spring, which opposes the force of the input bellows. When the process variable is at set point, the two forces are balanced and the beam is stationary. If the process variable exceeds set point, the controller's input increases expanding the input bellows. This increases the force of the input bellows and overcomes the spring tension. The beam moves up, causing the controller to be out of balance. The error detector mechanism is a flapper nozzle arrangement. Changes in the position of the flapper relative to the nozzle result in changes in back pressure which builds in a compartment behind the nozzle. Normally there would be an air supply and a fixed restriction behind the nozzle, but we've omitted them for the purpose of simplifying the illustration. This is where the controller computes any difference in the measured signal and set point. If the beam's position changes, it changes the relationship between the flapper and the nozzle which result in changes in back pressure. The back pressure compartment is connected to a pneumatic relay shown by a block labeled R. Its purpose is to convert changes in back pressure to proportional changes in the controller's output. We'll use another gauge to indicate the value of the output. The output signal is used for two purposes. For one, it's fed to the output balancing mechanism, another bellows, which we'll call a feedback bellows. If input changes, the new output causes the feedback bellows to bring the controller back into balance. The output signal is also sent to position a final control element. This is the corrective function of the controller. Right now, the controller is in balance with its output proportional to its input. Let's see how all the controller's mechanisms work together when the process variable exceeds set point. The input bellows expands and its force overcomes the tension of the set point spring. The controller is now out of balance. When the input bellow is expanded, the beam pivoted, bringing the flapper closer to the nozzle and increasing back pressure. The relay converts the change in back pressure to an output that reflects the increase. The increase in output is supplied to the feedback bellows, which expands and brings the controller to a balanced condition that reflects the difference between input and set point. The controller's new output is proportional to its new input, so the controller has responded to an increase in the value of the process variable above set point by producing an output that is proportional to the increase. In this way, the controller is providing P-only control. A proportional controller's output changes only if its input changes. This is characteristic of all proportional controllers. We've just seen one simplified example of how a controller can be designed for proportional control. Other controllers may have different mechanisms and may balance themselves in different ways, but the result is always the same. The controller responds to changes in process variable by supplying a proportional output.